name? Hannah. Hannah, I'm Alex. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm pleased to meet you too. What do you do? Uh, what do I do? Yeah. I raise money and awareness for homeless people across Canada. Uh, I started a pack now. Yeah, right. Nice to meet you too. How are you? Good, how are you? I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I have been speaking in uh, Thompson. I've been in Edmonton. I've also been to Calgary, Calgary. I have spoken in Vancouver, Victoria. I've also been to St. John's, Newfoundland. So I have been all the way from Victoria, all past all these to St. John's. Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Hannah Taylor and I've started the Ladybug Foundation to help the homeless. What I came here to talk about is why we all must care about people without a home. Hi Hannah. Um, I was just wondered, like, why is it the ladybug and not some other animal or bug? Well, I called it Ladybug Foundation because ladybugs are good luck, and we need good luck helping homeless people, and homeless people also need good luck. H Hannah, how long have you been doing this? I uh, first saw a homeless person when I was five, and I started raising money when I was about six, so I guess five years. This all started when I was five years old and I was going down a back lane and in my mom's car and we turned left instead of right and uh, we were just coming actually from a Christmas manicure. For the first time in my life I saw a homeless person and he was eating out of a garbage can. I asked my mom what this man was doing. She told me that this man was homeless and that he had to do that to eat. And so after a year of asking questions and worrying, uh, my mom finally told me that, Hannah, maybe if you do something about it, your heart won't feel so bad. So I went to my grade one teacher and I asked her if I could speak to my class about what I understood about homelessness. And we ended up raising money and clothes and food and giving it to a local mission. And then that's kind of how the Ladybug Foundation got started. I have made many friends, but there are five very special ones I want to tell you about. One man named Rick lives in Winnipeg. I met him at a homeless shelter where he goes for food and love. He is a beautiful person, and when I met him, he cried. I asked him why he was crying, and he said because I was hugging him and talking to him. He said there were happy tears. He is close to my heart, and he is a good, good person. He is just like you and me. He just needs someone to care about him. So many people just walk by and ignore what's going on. Or they shun away from people that are down and out and maybe picking out of the garbage can. It's not an adult that's helping me. It's a 10-year-old girl that helped me. Nice and warm, too. Yeah? I like your little hat. Thank you. To me, she's my little world. Yeah. You know, I'd do anything for that girl. She gave me that little bit of uh, reason to, come on, you can do it. You know, and when she held my hand, you can feel that love there such a little person with so much insight. Do people treat you differently because of this? Not really. Um, I go to school just like you guys. Um, my friends don't treat me any different since I started. So not really, no. Do people respect you more because you're like popular? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's just regular, you know? I'm just the same as everybody. I'm just doing my own thing. Who's 
members in my family. There's my mom, my dad, my older brother Quinn, who's away at university right now, my older sister Hillary, and then there's Gabriella, who's in kindergarten. This is our dog, Bella. Um, and Rella, who's the greatest in the world? Hannah. Um, your head's not in the shot. Oh, <laughs> Hannah. Yeah? I paid her 50 cents to say that. Get close from the camera. <laughs> and for five bucks, you have to pay her. For the truth, you have to pay her five bucks. I had a wonderful summer. I did break my foot because I was playing in the kitchen with a soccer ball. I went to my Nana's Lake. It's the best place on earth. I really like to go fishing with Merv, the plumber. Just this summer, I uh, used a hook for the first time. Yeah, they were jumping right for it. I got one. I got a big one. <laughs> Big one compared to the other one. Hey, hey. Whoa, crap. Sorry. I can't get it out of his mouth, Murph. Oh, oh, there we go. Sometimes I feel bad for the fish, but um, I like catching them and then letting them go. What else happened? Uh, I went to my favorite antique barn and I met a ghost. ghost dress. <laughs> what I like about this store is that everything in it has a story. And because it once was owned by somebody else, those people had a story, and so now they have a story. book called Ruby's Hope. Uh, it's kind of based on my first experience seeing a homeless person, except it's at a bug's point of view. Once there was a little ladybug. How wonderfully happy was she? She had a house, a family, and her best friend Bonnie Bumblebee. But one day something different happened. On her way to school, on the school bus, she was engaged in one of Bonnie's long discussions with everybody else on the bus when something caught her eye out the window. She looked and saw Bumblebee, just like her best friend, was sitting on the sidewalk with her arms out begging for money. There are some bugs that aren't as lucky as we are. Some bugs don't have a place to sleep tonight, a fridge to go to, and no buggy who loves them. Ruby and that bug on the street's eyes met, and as they stared at each other, Ruby began to feel something she had never felt before. And this is how her plan for the world started. How do people become homeless? There are many ways that a person could become homeless. They could be born into a homeless family. Um, their parents maybe weren't so nice to them, so they ran away and they became homeless that way. There isn't like one specific way. They're not there because they love to be. They're there because something's happened in their life that they cannot control, and now they're down and out. Okay, I've been off drugs about 20 years now, if not more. Alcohol, I'm uh, still fighting that. We're not bad, you know? You show us a little love, and that goes a long way with us. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's surprising how uh, people will treat you on the street. You learn not to trust anybody. You look after yourself. Sloan Mission is the place homeless people go for food and love. The Ladybug Foundation supports a lot of places across Canada. One of these places is the Sloan Mission in Winnipeg. Hi, it's Hannah. I'll let you right in. These are from Sears. Well, thank you. And these are some socks. And there's some socks here, and there's some undies. Thank you very much, because it's I so know nice we need you. some. Good to see you. I get more handsome every time you see me, don't I? Yeah. I know. Yeah. 
There we go. One of the most important things to me right now is probably a Salome Mission building Hannah's place. And where it gets noisier, that's, that's where it. Hannah's place is. It's an emergency shelter with beds for uh, men, women, and children. And we really, really need it because we have lots and lots of homeless people in Winnipeg. Okay, Hannah, this is gonna be your place. Wow. And this area over here, this is gonna be where the bedrooms are. Over um, against that window, there are going to be about eight or 12 beds that are going to be for homeless teenagers. Okay. And you know, the homeless people have been asking us ever since we bought this building when we were gonna have a place for them. Can't wait to see it. You know what? I know. Next week, we have the painters coming in. They're gonna paint the ceiling. Yeah. And then, I don't know what happens after that. We really need the emergency shelter because it'll be one more place where people can go to keep warm and stay alive. And we really need enough to fit all homeless people in Winnipeg and across Canada. They really need our help. Solo Mission estimates there are about 2,000 homeless people in Winnipeg. Canada has about 200,000 homeless people. The weather has been terrible. Like a few weeks ago, it was like minus 48. And there are still homeless per people that have to live on the street and have to survive on the street without a place to sleep or a place to go. And one of my um, good homeless friends actually froze to death um, that, that week, you know. I have slept in empty garages, empty houses. I have slept in back alleys. Okay, now here, I used to sleep behind the garbage can like this. There used to be an overhang, so the garbage can wouldn't hit us. But we'd have a grate under there, so nobody would bother us. We'd put some cardboard like this. There's always cardboard around. We used to put that so to keep a little bit of the wind out. And whatever blankets or extra jackets we had, we'd keep ourselves warm. There's a good friend of mine. We traveled for a few years. And I lost him behind here in the old days. I lost him behind here. And I went to wake him up in the morning. Couldn't. <clears throat> that was our life. That's the way we lived. I've always stayed away from my family when I got older. I wanted to prove myself. And in everything I did, I went backwards instead of forward. And I figured, well, they don't need someone like that. So I just stayed away from my family. I just been uh, on my own. We've raised a lot of money with ladybug jars, and we've made thousands of them to collect spare change in. My little sister played a big role here. We used her baby food jars, and my mom spray painted them, and then we painted ladybugs on them. They go across Canada to businesses, schools, everywhere. How much money do you think you raised? Well, with lots of help from schools like you guys and um, places where I've spoken, now over a million dollars. How would you like juggle going to school and helping the organization? To be honest, I don't miss as much school as I'd like to. 
when I do miss school, I get the work that I'm going to miss done before I go to where I'm speaking. And um, it works out in the end. Were you shy when you, st when you started helping them? Um, what do you mean, like shy with talking to people? Yeah. At the beginning, I was very, very nervous. Um, but now I've gotten used to it, and it's a lot of fun. Homelessness and hunger, it's not just in Canada. It's all over the world. I've learned that every three seconds, someone dies because they don't have what I have. Food and a roof over their heads and love and care. A big boss lunch is something that I started doing when I was like seven. At the first Big Boss lunch, I had 50 guests, and I drew 50 pictures. We sold them. The money would go to Ladybug Foundation. Two of the guests actually had a bidding war and ended up being sold for $10,000. What's it like talking to the Prime Minister? That's a very good question. Um, he was just a regular person. It was, it was like talking to my grandpa. My mom told me that there was one big, big, big boss that ran the whole country. And so I asked mom if I could say my speech to him. And after pestering her for like three weeks, I ended up saying my speech to Prime Minister Martin. It was really fun. Of course, politicians and big bosses usually do have quite a bit of money to, you know, donate to um, the Ladybug Foundation. But also, you know, they have the power to speak to People across Canada that sometimes I don't really have because I have to I have to still you know go to school and keep up with that kind of stuff. People will really listen to them, and that's why I need to talk to them about homeless people. Hi. Oh, oh that's really sweet. Mr. Fletcher is our member of Parliament from Winnipeg. Something I came across. Yeah, I'm going through a new textbook that's coming out in Manitoba, mm -hmm. and I was looking through it, and there was a constituent of mine in the book, and it was you. Really? Yes, and I have it on my computer screen. Oh, neat. So, Hannah, you're in a textbook with questions, <laughs> so kids from all over Canada will be answering questions about your program. But this can't be all serious. Do you want to have a race? On your marks, get set, go. Mr. Fletcher is quadriplegic from a bad car accident. But he taught me that if bad things happen in your life, you don't ever stop trying with all your might. You just try with all your might differently. And I think that's a great lesson. Good race. I think I should have run down that security guy. What do you think? <laughs> it's great to see you. Great to see you too. A lot of kids and a lot of people want to help out in one way or another, the world or their country, or their city, or even their neighborhood, but they just don't know how. And if you come up with an idea that you think will work, you can talk to other people about it, and they can probably help you out. Really, I'm just a normal kid, but I've gotten lots of chances to do something. What's the youngest person or child that you've ever met that was homeless? That's a very good question. Um, I think she was the same age as my sister. She was five. She was part of a homeless family. How much money are you planning to raise? Um, as much as is going to help, you know? But um, we don't only raise money for them. We raise awareness, and awareness means um, Tell, teaching people to care about homeless people, not, not just the money. Sometimes I see myself on a poster and I can't believe it. I mean, who's this guy up there? You know, sometimes I think to myself, you know, what am I doing? Is there, am I changing? And my, this is what it needs to start to come out of that, that area down there to take that little step. It's her doing, Salome's doing, that I'm getting up those stairs. Sometimes I'm asked what my religion is, and I say to them, I am an Irish 
So I'm Irish, Catholic, Buddhist, Inuit, Jew. And also now I'm a little Ojibwe because um, when I was when I was being interviewed by Rick um, with Rick, uh, it ended up that he said, "If anybody gives you grief," you just say, "I'll tell my big brother." <laughs> <laughs> Real straight in that mouth, eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was born with something called a flow murmur, and also with a little, a tiny, tiny, so don't worry, um, hole in my heart. And sometimes I have episodes where my heart beats too fast. Whenever I have a growth spurt, uh, my heart's beating really fast so I can't catch my breath. It kind of affects me because I'm a worrier. And I can get worrying mixed up with having a heart episode. My mom has told me that I turn a cement color in my face. My hands get really cold and um, my lips kind of grow a weird color. The doctors want to figure out what's wrong and how they might be able to fix it. One of my thoughts about my heart is that maybe because there's a hole or a space where nobody cares about homeless people in the world, there's a hole in my heart. And maybe it's not true, I'm not so sure, but it's one of like my little kid type theories. This is a place for homeless cats in Ottawa, and there's also black squirrels. And um, a man started it a few years ago because he saw that there are many stray cats. And he makes some houses here and feeds them. And it's just right next to the parliament buildings. And you might get big cheeks, you know that, don't you? Um, I just had an idea. It's about, it's gonna be a story, and it's about cats coming here on an Ottawa trip. It's gonna be like a book, or I'm hoping, and um, they get lost, and they have to live here at the cat village for a few days, and they experience the good life, and then the kind of harder life. And even though this cats probably love it here, it's a little cold. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of the idea of the story. When I grow up, I'm not so sure what I want to be, but I have lots of ideas of what I would like to be. Maybe the Prime Minister of Canada, like a stay-at-home mom, being an author at home. I think I have a little time to decide. So now tell me something, how's it all going? What do you mean, which? Well, tell me, how's the, how's the Ladybug Foundation coming along? I was just in like Grand Prairie, um... Now, what were, you doing? What were so you doing long. at Grand Prairie? Grand Prairie, I was speaking at a conference there at the university. Now, how have you been able to keep at it so long? I, I love doing what I'm doing. Like, I wish I didn't have, I, I wish we didn't have to have the Ladybug Foundation because I wish there were no homeless people. The hardest thing is probably because I have to travel quite a bit to speak. I get kind of homesick sometimes, but that's, that's okay. I but you speak going. so well. Thank you. He speaks so well. You do get homesick. Mm -hmm. But there's not, that's natural, isn't it? Yeah. Just like speaking is natural now. For me, homesickness has always been kind of natural. But on the other hand, just think about all the people who don't have a home to be homesick about. Yeah. All people, they're all the same, and they all need the same things. We need food, we need water, we need air, you know? And we also, we need each other, and we need to be cared and loved for. 
Um, my friend, my homeless friend Rick got a job. I'm so proud of him. He is now taking care of himself without, well, with some help, but soon he won't be needing, hopefully. He picks up garbage with, um, with other, uh, with, um, an, with a team of homeless people. And I'm sorry, I have a cold right now. My room's a total mess, but anyway. And also, he's going to a school to learn his culture, Ojibwe, because he went to a residential school and he kind of lost his culture. And I'm so proud of him. I'm uh, cleaning the streets, picking up garbage. Uh, in the wintertime, we take all the snow and the ice right under the cement. I mean, it's not the highest paying job, but that's fine. I love doing the work I do. You meet people, and they recognize how clean the street is. It's compliments that we haven't gotten for so long that, you know, when you do get it, you, sometimes you get a lump in your throat, you know? To be able to go into the bank and say, put maybe 60 bucks in there. You know, I'm doing okay this week. Put 60 bucks in there. If you want to say, I can do it, I can change. Granted, it's not easy, but it can be done. We can change our world for the better, even if we're little, if we, if we learn from our minds we care, and we care and work with our heart, we can make any kind of difference. And um, yeah, that's what I believe.